This is the weekly Griffball Hubcast, only on GriffballHub.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, the Griffball Hubcast. Uh, this is episode uh, 314. I am Sonic. Uh, joining me is DJ Blue and Ugi. Hey. Wow. Yeah, we, uh, we, both had, we both tried to do that at the exact same moment in time. It was almost impressive. Yeah, you know, well, we do our things. It's, uh, it's what we do. So such, last, such week was, uh, last week was an error on my part. I got my weekends wrong, and in fact, Sonic had told me he was going to be out in uh, Iowa or Ohio. Ohio. Same thing. Same the thing. state where all the uh, grift ballers are from, apparently. About where what? The state where all the grift ballers are from, apparently. Yeah, that's a lie. There's... <laughs> it's, I don't think it's. I think a lot of them have left now. But it used to be when, I, at least when I joined, it was probably like it. Probably it felt like half the league was from Ohio. Well, in all honesty, it's not super shocking if they were, only because of the fact that there is literally nothing to do in Ohio. That's true. So you so I've, not, it. I've been there. Yeah. It's true. It's weird. Why is it so dark in my room? Jesus. All right, hang on. Turning on lights. Anyways, we've got lots of fun things to talk about because we've got a lot of stuff coming up here in the next several weeks. This last week, we saw the conclusion of the AGLA, and uh, <clears throat> to an unexpected ending. Eh. Did you guys predict that one happening? I don't know if it was unexpected, necessarily. Aftershock was the number one team, and they yeah. beat underrated in the regular season. I wasn't okay. expecting it. I wasn't expecting it to be as one-sided as it was. But yeah. it felt under like um, underrated. I mean, they... When they, when they were playing conservative and they held up pretty well against it and they had some very nice passing goals, they also had a lot of uh, very nice passing goals, though, for Aftershock. And I think I commented, yeah. I think I commented, uh, or, uh, I commented on this uh, during the stream, actually, I think, where I just, where I was like, I think there was, I want to say there was like three or four between the two games that I can remember off the top of my head where uh, Aftershock scored because of a intercepted pass or a pass to the plate from underrated and it was and it's the sort of thing where it's like pass it's the kind of the whole thing of how passing can be a, a risk reward strategy yeah and it kind of bit him <laughs> there but no i think yeah. I, I, I would have thought it would have gone to three games but both games were close it wasn't like either was a blowout even if the scores weren't always even like it felt like once uh <clears throat> when underrated was down kind of had the ball then they were kind of at pretty good parity yeah well, and unlike the Pro Championship, which lasted nearly 90 minutes, this game ended in all three games concluded two. in a best of two, right? It, it ended up they took it in two games in just under an hour. Yep. So that was yeah, it was like a 40 minutes, an entire I would hour say. for. I think I think yeah. each was I think was each was right about 20 minutes. Yep. What what did surprise yep. me was I really thought that after Underrated lost the first game that they were going to even if they didn't necessarily win the second game I thought that they were going to at least make it very close, like bring it to a 5-4 or something like that. But that didn't really yep. happen. But usually, no. I think you see that a lot, I think, with players who have more experience. And I think I was kind of expecting this because this is how our team operated this past season. And when you look at a lot of, at a lot of veteran teams, especially in pro, this is what happens. You've got a lot of players who know the game and they are very good at, and they are able to adapt to the conditions that they're playing under. So when you have a best of three series, it tends to favor the team with experience because they are better at adapting. They are better at figuring out how the game is playing. So they play the first game. That by that time they've gotten used to how everybody on the other team is playing. They know how to adapt uh, to fix to adapt to the connection and to how everybody in, how everybody in that other game was playing the first game. And in that second yeah. game, you you tend to see them come back stronger. And in this case, I mean, you look at Underrated's roster and they have I mean they have a couple new people in there. Yeah, a Godly and a Retrograder. I think this is Retrograder's yeah. first season. I think it is for Godly as well, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, and Retrograder, I I have no doubt in my mind we're going to see great things out of him coming up, especially in the next uh, AGLA season. I would not be surprised if we saw him actually go pro. It wouldn't surprise me either, yeah. He I was dominated the runners in, in Amy League this year. I was annoyed because uh, after, I, after I got picked up by Crowbar, I think, when I was in a party with him, first time I'm saying, like, hey, for draft picks, you should pick up Retrograder, and he didn't pick up Retrograder, and, like... Okay. I guess all I'm saying, like, throw I, this I, out like, there I as much it. as I love me some Trent, but it's Crowbar. Yeah, he never played with Retro, to be fair. But right, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, um, I think you I mean you look at the rest of the roster though. Pop Tart and Spoon, they've both been playing for a long time. Um, a lot of it on the same team because they both been on Paradox Warriors quite a bit, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they have chemistry and they have experience. So I like I would have expected to 
see that kind of come into play and help them improve in the game too, but we didn't really see that happen, and I don't know if that's just because Aftershock never really let up the pressure. Sometimes you see teams get cocky after they take a first game, especially when it wasn't, especially like in that first game, it wasn't particularly close. I think sometimes you see teams get a little overconfident. I think yeah. they might have done a good job of uh, avoiding that, especially because, I mean, during the regular season, they already have been bit by that with that whole uh, 5-4 loss to Reflex. I think that probably taught them well, and they learned from that. Yep, <clears throat> definitely. Whatever the reason was, I mean, we didn't really see that adapt that that kind of uh, adapting happen. It was kind of just more the same in game two. I think yeah. I think there was more. I think there was more. I think the second game was longer. I think they did a better job of drawing it out because they were a little more conservative here and there. But it didn't felt it didn't feel like a different game, like we sometimes see in the, these best of threes. Yeah, I totally agree. So we were going to have someone from Aftershock on the show today, but unfortunately they had to uh, cancel at the last minute. So we are unable to interview them or talk with them about the game. So uh, that being said, coming the next AGLA season will be announced towards the as we roll into the playoffs for GGL, most likely towards the beginning of 2017. The, it will mistaken. most likely start in January. Yeah, because GGL... Okay. <clears throat> GGL will end, we, the plan is for GGL to end before the holidays in December, because obviously gotcha. if we get there, nobody's getting anything done. I mean, we're not, gonna, we're not expecting playoff games to get played while Christmas and New Year's is going on and whatnot. So, right, at least not with people, players right. who are going to be so... So most um, likely what's going to happen is playoffs will finish up around the middle of December, maybe earlier, depending on how many teams we have that make playoffs and how big the bracket is. Yeah. But, um... Once that finishes off, there'll be the holidays. They might I don't know what the AGLA Edmonds plans are. They might announce some of the season during that holiday break. I think that's what that's what would make the most sense, since there's downtime then anyway. They can kind of start uh, talking about this and then as we roll into the new year into twenty seventeen, then you're gonna see that start. And uh, Pro Tour yeah. will also be starting about the exact same time because that's starting mid January, I think. I would have to actually pull up the I'll have to pull up my schedule doc to actually double check. But the plan for uh, the plan for that was to start. Actually, I think it is. It might be end of December. It's right around the beginning of the year, though. Cool, cool. So while we're looking at that, let's take a look at what's coming up next and uh, soon, actually, in a matter of tomorrow. So opening tomorrow is going to okay. be the first Halo Five. No, that's not the first. It's the second Halo 5 GGL season. So registration for the second GGL season and to drop back to the Pro Tour, I just opened the doc. The, uh, it is literally start, uh, the dates that I have right now is January 2nd for the first Pro League qualifier. So it is okay. literally <clears throat> at the start of the new year. So yeah, they're both going to be around the same time. And I had planned to have uh, said more information about this, but right now I am holding back because I am still figuring out who else is going to be running this league with me, I would like to be able to announce that to everybody when I go through and announce the full details. So <laughs> once that's figured out and we announce that, there's going to be... I'm gonna, I want to host a town hall sort of thing. So we'll probably... DJ, I haven't talked to you about this, but if you want to moderate something like that, we could do that. Just sure. have, it, have it streamed. I'll have, we can let people submit questions for a time beforehand, and I can get myself and the other leaders in here, and we can... Answer questions yeah, about the format for everybody. So that's that's the plan for that. But uh, GGL, <clears throat> that is registration is going to be starting. That will open up tomorrow. It is going to be open for a period of one week. So it will end at eleven fifty nine Eastern on Sunday, October second. And then uh, there will be a one week break so that we can make the uh, we can make the schedule for the veterans division and name our investors, get them up to speed. I know Cal and Goose usually they have a shorter period of time, but since our administration, this we are all new to running the GGL, even though we have experience running a league, we want to be sure to leave us with time to yes. go through and figure this all out. And Achievables, we hope to uh, announce around then as well. Yep. So First games of the season will be starting on the 10th, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. yes. Uh, also, after that one-week break, the regular season will be starting on that 10th. And I have a schedule doc for this too. It's just a different schedule. It's just in a you different say place. Schedule doc one more time, <laughs> and I swear to God, I'm going to label you an accountant. <laughs> it might be possible. Might be possible. All right. So here's just a couple of things. If you are new to the GGL and you're new to the leagues and not sure exactly how to do this, what you're going to want to do in order to get your team signed up for the GGL is to go to griffballhub.com. Make sure that each of your players is registered with their profile on griffballhub.com, and then as a captain, you can create a new team. 
you actually do not need your players do not actually need to be registered as a player profile just the captain just the captain you with can, the players you can with add, the players gamer tags you can add a player just from their gamer tag if they don't have a profile okay unless right. unless the back end has changed and i don't know about it but in the past last season I, uh, this worked for me cuz i think it was i think it was making history who didn't have a player profile when i added him to our, to our roster and it's still okay. to do it so yeah, well, i know that we just, it's the just preference the is the preference is that each player should have their own profile on the hub yeah, it's worth doing. That way it's a little easier yeah. for tracking. It's a little easier for being able to tag people and so that you've got access to the forums. Uh, it is also, if you are a captain and you're going to be a captain of a team, a new team or otherwise, do make sure that you go into the GGL forums and you read through the rules and regulations so that you're fully aware mm -hmm. of not only your responsibilities, but also what the rules are regarding games, regarding reschedules, regarding when to take a knee and various other uh, little the rules actually are actually not in the forums. They are on, um, if you go into the Why homepage, the hell are they not on the forums? They are on the main site proper, actually. There is a, uh, in the GGL tab, there is a rules page on there. There might be a link to it in the forums, and if there isn't, I'll drop it in there. It, It'll also there be is. with the signups. Hmm? But, yeah. There is. Is there? There's a link. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> you can always find all of the rules for all of the leagues with regards to how we how, how they run and what you're what you're what the responsibilities are of the captains uh, on the hub. Make sure that you are going to griffballhub.com because that is the source of all the information that you could ever want or need regarding how these things run. You do need a minimum of four players in order to get your team into the GGL. You can have a maximum of, I want to say, ten. eight. Ten? Okay, you can have a maximum of ten players. Final rosters will be locked out and closed as of, I want to say, week, is it week three or week four? In the past, it has been playoffs. You're, Up to you playoffs? Cannot, okay. You cannot drop players, but you can add players until okay. the beginning of playoffs. That's how it's been. That's how it's been in the past, at least. Gotcha. They, 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 that might have, they might have changed it because of the team that I was on uh, in the first season of Halo Four. Gotcha. Dragon Guys team, because they oh, had okay. a, they had a first round buy, and I actually got added to their roster before their first playoff game, but after playoffs had started. And officially, the rules said that once a team played a playoff game, their roster's locked. Gotcha. So I think they might have just changed it to say that one playoff start at locks, or they might have changed yeah. it to a week. But okay. yeah, and I remember that the uh, our opposing team's captain was he was not happy about it. We were kind of just sitting there in the chat box with him complaining, like, like because he would not play the game until he had an answer from the Evans whether or not we were allowed to play and be added to the roster. So yeah. uh, with regards with regards to team names, if a team if you are wanting to create a new team that has oh, that with a name that has already been used that is in the graveyard, I do there is a process in order to attain that name. You you would have to correct? contact um, you would have to contact previous captain. Right. Usually, I don't know exactly how it's done because I'm not the one who has done it in the past. But I know all three of us uh, who are admitting the GGL have the ability to unlock threads, so we can move threads out of the graveyard. But if it is an existing team, you if you uh, if you are able to, it would be good to have a captain or have a prominent member of the original team contact us to let us know that you are indeed taking over the team name and it's not just resurrecting a dead team and as a new entity. Yep. But yeah, uh, any of us that's myself, uh, Bad Alley Cat, and Rage More Nerd, we can all we should all be able to unlock threads, I believe. Rage might not. Yeah. He should be a, he should be a CL. He should have global mod powers. It might only be the AGLA form though, because he's an admin. I'm not sure if he has access to GGL forms yet. But I know yeah. Ali and I do. Cool, awesome. Sounds fun. I know there's going to be a lot of new teams that are going to be rolling out with a lot of new players, especially with uh, everything that was happening at PAX. And we are going to be making a huge announcement about this next weekend. Because Rage Mornard and I will be joined by Poison Pop Tart down at TwitchCon in San Diego, California, where I will be representing the hub. And uh, we will be talking about this in several different interviews that are being scheduled currently. Ooh. So, as for next Sunday's Hubcast, I'm going to see if it's possible that we can actually do it live from the TwitchCon show floor. Cool. So with a couple special guests, which would be awesome. That is still in the works. We, are no, we have no confirmation of that. So if I'm not on here next week, it's because I'm in San Diego on the TwitchCon floor. Excuses. I know. I could Periscope in. I'm just kidding. So. <clears throat> I spelled Wednesday Yay. in this document. Oh, what have I done? You I, See, Windows. That's all I'm saying. Windows. But actually, uh, I wrote this on my laptop, which is Linux. 
It's not even a real thing, dude. Linux? It you know, it You mean the you mean the most used operating system in the world? Most abused operating system in the world. That's because people I'm just don't trying know to what get your browser. Fine, 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 fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have no idea. Honestly, <laughs> uh, I don't. I use a Mac and Windows periodically once in a great blue moon. Although now I have to actually buy a Windows computer because everything yeah, that I'm doing now is. Dude, Halo 10. You need to play Halo 5 on your PC. Yep. Yep. Well, and the majority of all of my streaming software is. Greatly compliant with all things Windows, but not with anything with got a, that that uses Mac. But for any of my audio production, video production, etc., actually producing stuff, Mac, I have to use the Mac because like, Windows just locks up and has a seizure. I, I haven't had too much issues with Windows and multimedia stuff, but Mac is generally has been the industry's uh, device of choice for a lot yep. of um, multimedia production and whatnot. But uh, I will never yeah. use. I will never use a Windows for DJing again. A Windows computer for DJing again. I was using Serato uh, on a Windows machine once, depends. and it what froze up. You have? An i7. Okay, that's interesting. Because I've known, I've I've heard of known issues with some DJing software with AMD processors, actually. Oh yeah, don't with ever generations use, no, of AMDs. Never. I never, never used. AMD. I never ran into that problem because two of my three computers at the time were um, AMD. My laptop uh, was an A8 and. My desktop, which is what I'm still using now, that is an overclocked 8320. Ooh, nice. It, uh, was, yeah, so it was I... overclocked more, but I had to turn it down because it is, uh, since I moved to my apartment, it is in a much more constrained space, so it doesn't have as ah. much room for heat. Gotcha. Also, I was running it uh, at like 0.125 volts higher than AMD said you should. Nice. Well, that's that's a problem. You might want to get a fan on that or The, the reason water. that they say that Just is... Just spray it down regularly? <laughs> I don't think no. You, you should not do that. You can if you use desaturated <laughs> alcohol. Uh, yeah. Uh, if, you use, if, you use, if you use isopropyl, then you're fine. Yeah, but that's not really going to do a lot cooling wise. It's not very efficient. No, but it's really fun to watch it spark. Just kidding. Uh, that's a bad thing. Don't ever you're, actually do what we're. You're the right reason now. I hate people. I know. <laughs> it's fun. You're, the, I have you're a job. the reason working in IT makes me hate people. Because well, I see stuff like that or. What's really okay? So I I don't know if I've ever told this story before. So I used to run, I was I, I, I at one point was a quality a con, uh, call quality manager at Adobe Software Systems for the technical support division, and they we had a <clears throat> very creative and colorful technical support rep that sometimes got a little irritated with people's stupidity. You're not doing it right if you're not. Yeah. So we had some curmudgeon call and was irritated about the fact that his Adobe wasn't working. We're like, well, excuse me, sir, but what we I don't understand. My Adobe isn't working. Well, oh, we, efforts. we make 27 different t titled software, sir, with a multitude of different purposes. Which Adobe software were you using? I don't know, but it was on. And then all of a sudden it completely crashed my computer. What? Well, my whole computer was shut down and I won't turn back on. All right, let's go through some basic problem-solving steps here, sir. So if I could first of all have you check the connection between your monitor and uh, your PC. Make sure it is properly screwed into the back, properly mounted, and the screws are all in. da da da, -da. Uh, It is on the back. I, I can't see the back of the, the computer. Hold on, let me go get a flashlight. Power's been out for about the last 20 minutes. <laughs> really? Yes. Do you still have the packaging for your computer, sir? Uh, yeah, yeah, I actually just got it about a month ago. <laughs> okay, what I want you to do is I want you to put the pack, get, the, put the computer back in the box in its original packaging, oh, no. and I want you to seal it back up, and I need you to send this back to the manufacturer because, sir, you are definitely not smart enough to actually own a computer. Please, don't call us again. <laughs> and while I completely agree with his assessment of the individual who called. I unfortunately had to fire the person. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, you, you, that's not something uh, that you generally say. No. Although, in, in I, had, I, laughed. I had to laugh. I was like, well, yeah, you weren't wrong. It's just that you, you, my, you, you should not have actually gone there with the conversation. 
we probably should have asked the obvious question of, gee, sir, what does it mean when the power's out? Does it mean your computer needs power? Probably. No, it's Adobe's fault. It's Adobe's fault. It's all Adobe's fault. My Adobe isn't working. <laughs> it's the wor- That was the number one thing we always heard. My Adobe isn't working. So, anyways, I mean, now that we're back off It's off preloaded topic. on a lot of computers now, though, I think, as well. Most of them oh, yeah. see have reader, uh, have reader built in. And, reader and, and Flash. Not so much Seth. Flash anymore, actually. Flash is pretty much deprecated oh. at this point. Thank God. It's either, like, it's built into most of your major browsers at this point, and they're starting to move on to HTML5. Yeah, which is awesome. Um, so, yeah, other than that, we've got this coming up this next week. We are now on technically on break. So we've got custom nights coming up uh, starting on Wednesday. Our Wednesday night grift ball stream is going to be custom grift ball. I think it's going to be a good opportunity for us to. Uh, Wars on Wednesdays back. I think it's a good opportunity for us to revisit our little fun with Wars on Wednesdays uh, and then possibly go back and, and it's going to be dealer's choice on Thursday because I will not be available Thursday as I will be with Rage down at TwitchCon flying in, getting set up and going to the pre-Twitch partner gathering shindig with Hyper RPG. So. so we have the power is what you're saying. I have a question. Hey, Ugi. <laughs> yes, DJ. You haven't said a whole lot so far. No, I haven't. How are you doing this morning? <laughs> All right. But uh, I do know that people have been asking me if I don't have a team and I want to play in the GTL, what do I do? And what would they do? There is a uh, recruiting forum over... Uh... That question was to Ugi. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> okay, Ugi. <laughs> I was trying to get him to talk more. <laughs> I've just been listening to you two. <laughs> It's great. He's just here to listen to our voices. You got the stories. You know, you got the knowledge. I'm just here for bouncing ideas off of, I guess. <laughs> All right. So who? Go. whoever wants to answer that question, go ahead and answer that question, I guess. <laughs> I'm putting my ears on. You can have this one if you want it. <laughs> <clears throat> well, there is a recruiting forum on GriffballHub.com that uh, is for free agents. You can go ahead and sign up there post your info and captains who need players can take a look at that forum and possibly invite you to some games see how you do do uh, do not just go in there and post something in the free agents forums and then sit around and expect to be contacted go into the teams looking for a player threat contact the teams that you Mm -hmm. see because that is the more likely method that you're going to get on a team and And alternatively create a team and get all those friends contact some of those other new players who are looking for teams and aren't able to find one and to do that, though, you are going to need to actually be signed up and registered on GriffBallHub.com. <laughs> yeah, in order to post on the forums, yep. you obviously need to have a forum account, which will also, they, uh, it has been integrated into the player profile. So if you have one, it should work with the other. Which does lead us back to the original of, if you'd like more information about what you can do, how you can get involved, and what's going on with the GGL and the GriffBallHub leagues in general, sign up and register on GriffBallHub.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at GriffBallHub. That's with one F. You spell it with two, we'll make fun of you. People are asking questions in Slack chat that I answered like five minutes ago. Why are people communicating with us in Slack instead of on here? Hmm? No, it's not for the stream. Right? It's, it's not for the stream. It's like general oh. GGL questions. <clears throat> All right. So as far as scheduling is concerned, when the team, once their signups open up, uh, captains, you will have the opportunity then to determine what your best days are for your team. So you should start, probably start talking to your players about that now. Uh, if there are teams that you want to play with, make sure you hit up that captain. Or, like you said, there's a lot of free people looking out there. I know OMG Ate My Rice is still looking for a team. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's going to be a power player for somebody. So. I know Milk Me is too. Milk Me 207. Milk Me? Mm-hmm. Milk Me's back. He's back. Oh, I don't think God. he recognized you, though. Yeah, Milk Me's going to have to make sure he doesn't get himself banned for the things that come Are out of his sure? mouth. Hang on, though. you said Milk Me 207, though. His old yeah, name used to be X. It used to be X Milk Me, and then X. Yeah. It's, yeah. You're sure it's the same one? It's the same I don't one. Know. Was... He said because... zero logic and everything. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> if I wasn't on Team Caboose, I would have to get zero logic back together. I'm surprised. He's been talking about getting an Xbox again for like two years at this point. 
I can't. He has actually He's back. He has one. Who's playing with He's this? Playing this, this, weekend. Weekend. this is why yeah. I didn't. This is why I didn't believe him though. He's been saying for two years that he's going to get an Xbox, and he never did. Wow. So that explains why he was pretty dang good. Nice. So well, Mommy needs a team, too. Just don't let him talk to Forto. Just don't let him talk in general? Don't let him talk. Don't let him talk on stream, yeah. That, that's probably Yeah. Nice. That's, that's... I would rather have... I mean, his, his suspension wasn't... He wasn't even on stream, what he said, but it was... He was, was kind of people were goading I, him into it. It was a dumb situation. Yeah. Well, all I, all I have to say is that uh, the verbal control skills are still a work in progress on that one. I would rather have young. I would I would trust young nasty man on stream more than I would trust him. <laughs> but that said, though, Milk Me's skills on the field are pretty damn impressive. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I I was. I was kind of floored by it. I was, I thought it was really hilarious. So, cause he just kind of walked in and I had no idea who he was, but he just started wrecking people right and left. <laughs> it was awesome. But, uh, yeah. Yep. So him and his wife have a mouth on him, <laughs> but yes. So that being said, now that we've completely destroyed new players, I, mean, I, would, new players. I would go into the story of why he didn't have an Xbox for a couple of years, but that uh, definitely is not, this definitely is not the place for that. What did it get taken away by the law? Next time, on Microsoft Sun Nachos TV. Microsoft just banned it, didn't they? I don't want to talk about it uh, publicly. Right. Well, there we go. <laughs> Nonetheless, <clears throat> do make sure that if you have only four players, that all four players of yours are going to be able to play all season long and are not going to be at risk of a ban. Otherwise, you might want to pick up a fifth and a sixth. Mm -hmm. So, there we go. Oh, my <laughs> lord. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh you tell me about that. Things that happen in life that usually are because of actions of our own and then there are things that our mouth causes other people to have actions and the repercussions of those actions can of course be a little bit detrimental. Situations that I'm referring to are not something we're talking about on stream, but definitely something that might have come through in the Skype chat. Hashtag <laughs> I have, uh, I have. There's so a many, breeze in here. I have so many milk me <laughs> stories, and I would love to I talk about just them, to be but there. I don't like being banned. Yeah, and I don't think he likes being banned either. Yeah. Alrighty. <clears throat> so, all that being said, what's yeah. next? I know my team is going to be happy. My the new well, there's going to be a lot of change ups happening this GGL season. I've talked about this before, but I'm going to talk about this once again because it's interesting. Uh, don't be afraid. If you are looking to considering starting a team, considering rebooting a team, or considering just uh, jumping into a team that you've never been on before, make sure that you are that that. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to talk to people. Don't be afraid to say, "Hey, listen, I'm looking for a team," or "Hey, would you like to be on my team?" Because it's totally worth it. You never know who might say yes. There's going to be a lot of change-ups this season for the first time in as, as since I have been in the leagues for the first time ever. Uh, Poison Pop Tart's not going to be on. Uh, Paradox Warriors. In hmm. fact, and neither is and neither is Gambit because they're going to be joining me for the respawn All Stars. I think that, and I will. This is my first season that I won't be on the NSAA. I don't, so a lot I don't of see stuff shuffling. shuffling quite as much as it, it seems about the same as in the past. Most of your um, a lot of your a lot of the higher end teams those generally shuffle around and come back kind of in new forms more or less. Mm -hmm. Like with GGL, I think it's a lot of time. A lot of times you see players moving around between teams. Because I want to play with different people and whatnot. There's been a there's a couple of teams that or there's a couple of cores like there's like cores of players that stay together. Mm -hmm. But generally, but like you don't usually see the yeah. exact same team come back with the exact same roster season after season. Even if it's a team with the same name, the roster might be very different. The NSAA would be the account the the yeah would be the opposition to that rule yeah. because the fact we've had the same roster for well there's a couple over for over 10 seasons there, there's, a, there's um, a couple teams that have always had like the same core but yeah, yeah like i'm uh, like on the top on, like the top tier teams at least you look at it and that shuffles around a lot mm -hmm. yeah except yeah and then there's that bottom tier team like, right? like there's kind of the the, uh, the, uh, the very experienced veteran teams that aren't necessarily that like play the gtl more for fun but aren't like and they're not yeah they kind of high level competition like Team, like team that are teams that are good, uh, but they're not really in it to win it, so to speak. But like teams like uh, Gadger, Ways and Means, 
uh, way to uh, mm-hmm. what the griff, etc. Yeah. All right. So that being said, uh, make sure you hit up that recruitment forum. Make sure you put a put on a little yeah. ad in the players looking for teams thread if you are wanting to find a team and be active in those threads. Be active in the chat and don't be afraid. Of, hey, listen, start playing with other grip ballers. Play We've customs. got customs going every day. There are people out there looking for it. If you're not sure who's in a custom, make sure you're throwing some into the actual chat forum, chat thread in the forum, uh, or just simply tag Griff Ball Hub on there, Twitter. Uh, there is Griff a Ball uh, Griff Ball Hub Spartan company actually that you uh, that you can that, join. I believe yes, I actually, believe Jedi Hunter one. runs it. I'm not <clears> sure if we uh, we might have other people who can accept them, but yeah, you can uh, request to be to to be added mm-hmm. to that. And we're only half full right now. I think we've got like seventy some odd eight, seventy about seventy some odd people. Sounds about right. Yeah. So. Uh, in just the Spartan company, there's a lot of grip ballers who are in a, who are in other Spartan companies. But uh, yeah, let's. I'm in that Spartan company, and you can always pop over to that Spartan company and say, "Hey, look, here we go. This is what's happening." So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, but no, for sure. Um, don't again, like I, I mentioned, I mentioned this earlier, but don't just post in the free agents forums and leave because that's you're not. Yeah. The, 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 the truth mm-hmm. of the matter is, a lot of the a lot of the better, like a lot of rookies, just go in. They think that uh, they're just like, oh, I'll just post in the free agents forums and someone will find me, and uh, and they all kind of have the same mindset where they just post in the free agents and say nothing else, and then yep. the only players who are actually like saying that they're looking for teams a lot of the times are veteran teams, and they'll go through the three free agents forums, they'll see newer players, and they might not necessarily be in- interested straight away because a lot of them it's kind of the same story. You don't really know what they you don't really know what they're playing as half the time. They're all runners, and they claim to be the best runner who's ever played the game, and it's almost never true. But, uh, right. Yeah. If you think uh, yep, if you think you're the me. best runner that ever existed, <laughs> you're probably that probably isn't true. Sorry, guys. But uh, yep. Yeah, the best way, and this is how I my first season was straight on zero logic, which at the time was the fifth winningest team in AGLA history. We have since I think taken third. Winningest is that a word? If uh, not, trademark out right it now. Is now. <laughs> okay, awesome. I, I've heard it before, but I don't know if it's an actual proper word. I say I own it, dude. I say own it. <laughs> <laughs> run with it it sounds good but yeah um but yeah like at the time they were like part of it was part of it was good luck because at the time the team had been on hiatus and they were building Bria. they were coming back together but they were missing a lot of their core so they were they needed a lot of new blood to really come in and fill out the team but they were looking for more veteran players it just so happened that i contacted them and it worked out so there's something something judas saw in me which apparently turned out to be right because i ended up running the whole league later but <laughs> yeah <laughs> And it works. Yeah, reach out to so you can. I mean, you can reach out to those veteran teams and talk about it. A huge part of it is um, being able to be flexible. If you if you want to play on a better, if you want to try to get on a veteran team, so you, you probably shouldn't expect to start at least not straight away, not until yeah. you prove yourself. And if you have flexibility in the role that you can play, that that's always a big plus as well. So here's a question. One of the things I definitely want to cover before we end up killing the show here today uh, is the, the the definition of what defines. Or qualifies a team to be a veteran team as opposed to being a non-veteran team. Are you because, for example, about for veteran divisions or for veteran division, like is there? Do you are you automatically thrown into a veteran division if you no. have people with a certain amount of experience? Veteran divisions, we have reverted back to the Halo Four method of doing things. Last season, is... last season we encouraged. Uh, last season, uh, the, uh, it was encouraged. Uh, teams were encouraged to if they had ever played a season of organized grapple before, to register for the veteran division. Because the veteran divisions would be organized based on skill primarily, so you would be put with mm-hmm. teams that were at a, of a similar skill level, but you would still have the flexibility of a longer schedule to be able to play more games and whatnot. You could still sign up for classics if you wanted, but the teams were heavily encouraged to sign up for veterans if they played before. But um, the problem that the problem that I've seen some players have with that, and one of the problems I personally have with it, is with a schedule like that where you're ranking teams based on skill. You'll have one division where it's like, say, like you have the top five teams in the same division because it's skill based. The like, two or three of those teams aren't going to make playoffs off of record, even though in any other division they would probably easily win their division. It's not okay. exactly very fair. So, uh, just just uh, just looking at it from that point of view. So we're going back to the old school, uh, the Halo Four method of veteran divisions, which is more or less the veteran divisions are designed more for teams that have experience and want a bigger challenge or want to be more competitive. So you are going to be playing with that extended schedule and. Uh, against tougher opponents and you can i mean you can still request what teams to be put in a division against but 
the idea is that it's not we're not going to top load one division with the best teams and have gotcha. them fight it out between each other for playoffs because playoffs is what that's what yeah. playoffs are supposed to be for is for those teams to eliminate each other not have it happen during the regular season and make them rely on achievables yep. to actually get into playoffs. So now, the playoffs for GGL change. is the playoffs for GGL will be everybody together, not just a veterans it's, division G- playoffs. It's the same way playoffs standard. are the same way they've always been. The Good, veteran okay. division if you're a veteran <clears> team, you're gonna have a higher seed than a non veteran team. That's how I, I think in the past they've done it. I can't remember if they I think they've done it both ways actually. I think when they first did veteran divisions it was based on like win percentage, regardless of what division you were in. I would prefer to do it where veteran teams have it for over non-veteran teams if they made it on win percentage. Like that, that's the way I would see it happening. Basically, is you would have your top seeds go to the top veteran teams by a win percentage, then the top classic teams by win percentage, then to the top veteran teams by achievables, then the top classic teams by achievables. That's how I would do it personally. Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah, we'll know a little bit more once we get closer to there because I think that cool. there's arguments made both ways, but that's. That's how I. That's the way I think makes the most sense in terms of parity. But yeah, cool. So if yeah, the veteran team like in this case, I'm talking about a veteran team just as any team with experience. But if you're looking at a veteran division team, I mean, those are usually those are going to be your. I mean, that's up to each individual team whether or not they want to do I, it or not. I, I am wanting to ensure that my team is not put into a veteran. We have a few we experienced not, players. We, we but... are not going to place teams in veteran divisions if you don't sign them up. Sign up for the veteran division. Awesome sauce. Okay, cool. Yeah, if you if you sign up for classic, you will be in classic. If you sign up for veteran, you will be in veteran. We are just encouraging teams that want to be that want that bigger challenge, that are more competitive, that want to have a competitive focus to get into the veteran division. Because I mean, we've all we've all played in classic divisions. A lot of times, you might have one team or two teams that end up becoming forfeit factories by the end of the season because I mean, whatever for whatever reason, time commitments yeah. change or. The league isn't everything that they thought that would pan out to be. You think you see, I think you see a lot of new teams come in, think it's going to be easy, and it's not, and they kind of get turned off every once in a while. But uh, you see, so, but uh, veteran divisions, it's kind of all teams that have been around for a while. You know that all those teams are there to play and finish out the season. So yeah. I mean, it's, and I mean, you're also going to be able to play more Griffall. I mean, obviously the classic divisions, those are all ten games, two games per week over five weeks plus that makeup week. In the veteran mm-hmm. divisions, you can choose between I want to say it was fifteen and twenty-four games. So you can play anywhere from three to four games a week, depending on your availability, yeah. like how, like how many games your team wants to play. So if you want to play more Griff Ball, that's another option for you there. So it's it's not for it's not going to be for every team. And gotcha. I know like I like I know in the yeah I know it's kind of that's kind of in opposition to what we did last season where we said any it's for every veteran division team. We're not saying that anymore. It's you it, it's really intended for those people who want that tougher challenge or who want more competition. Okay. If that's not something that you're in the league for, I would recommend signing up for classics. But uh, yeah, that's 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 more or less how we're doing this here. So it's basically the same as it was throughout the entirety of Halo Four. Cool. All right. Well, I think that uh, covers just about everything we had to talk about. Correct. <clears throat> yep. Yep. That's what right. I can think of. So, and we've been doing this for like maybe forty, fifty minutes. So. Yeah. Actually, I have so, a right. live counter right there. I could have just looked at that rather than the clock. There but... we- so just some closing thoughts. Make sure that you guys are hitting the follow and subscribe button on our, our Twitch page, which is, of course, at twitch.tv slash griffballhub. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter. <laughs> Twitter is the most important hub. one. Right? Yeah, at griffballhub for all the latest information about what's happening with the Griffball Hub, our leagues, our players, and our life. Until then, get hammered. Thank you for listening to the Griffball Hubcast. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Griffball Hub for all the latest in Griffball news and entertainment.